Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. This week, we're talking about cranberries. So as a food of the season, I wanted to take the opportunity to discuss it. And it's true, I think, for many people... Thanksgiving or maybe Thanksgiving and Christmas are the only times they even think about cranberries. And then I was thinking about it and was like, well, cranberry juice is often used in an adult beverage, (laughs) right? And urinary tract infections are often said to, you know, use cranberry juice for that. So I was like, okay, there's a lot for us to discuss here. So as always, we'll start with the nutrition facts and then we'll get into what these mean for our health. So big picture, fresh cranberries are about 90% water. It's like 87% water. In one cup of raw, unsweetened cranberries, you'll get 46 calories, 0.4 grams of protein, 0.1 grams of fat, 12.2 grams of carbs, of which there are 4.6 grams of fiber and 4 grams of sugar. So what we take away from this, right, is that it's basically water and carbs. In those carbs, the fiber part is kind of a lot. I mean, 4.6 grams of fiber in a cup is pretty good. It puts it on par with like, I think blueberries are 3.6. And I use blueberries because they're in the same family as cranberries. So it's pretty decent. And then the other side is the sugar, right? And they are simple sugars like sucrose and glucose and fructose that are in there. But a quick note here, right? Remember that most of the time, we're not eating fresh cranberries. Like they're super tart. And so most of the time, we're eating them or having them as a juice, which means we're not getting that fiber. And then a lot of the juices that are available also add sugars and additional sweeteners. So the macronutrient front isn't really offering us much because of how we end up eating or using cranberries. So the real benefit comes from the micronutrient side. So let's look at the vitamins and minerals for a second. So cranberries give us vitamin C, manganese, vitamin E, vitamin K1, copper, and antioxidants. And it's those antioxidants that I think do a lot of the heavy lifting for cranberries. So the antioxidants are mostly found in the skin of the cranberry. And some of the kinds of antioxidants that are in there, we've talked about before, like quercetin. We have a whole nutrition nugget just on quercetin. There's also myricetin, pionidin. So pionidin is how they get their rich red color. Your salic acid is a triterpene. So this is what's in a lot of herbal medicine. So triterpenes are really interesting. They have big anti-inflammatory effects. And then cranberries also have A-type proanthocyanidins. And it's this plant compound, the proanthocyanidins, that's responsible for the UTI support. So let's talk about the UTI thing for a second. So first, urinary tract infection is bacterial, and it's really common. It's believed that the A-type proanthocyanidins in the cranberries prevent E. coli from attaching to the lining of the bladder in the urinary tract. So most of the research talks about it by way of prevention. I've heard people talk about it as using the cranberry juice once they have symptoms. Only a bit of the research looked at it as treatment. And honestly, the research is on both sides. It's sort of inconclusive. What is interesting to me, though, is there are human studies on both kids and adults And then just note that like in those studies, it was cranberry juice or taking a cranberry supplement, right? So understanding, you know, you're probably not going to get a therapeutic benefit from eating a couple cranberries, but we can certainly add them into the bigger picture of other things we're eating and maybe, you know, up the ante a little. Again, like on terms of the prevention side versus the treatment side, maybe people have had an experience on the treatment side because, you know, maybe they take it early enough at the very first sign of experiencing a symptom, but I don't know. I think everybody can (laughs) try that for themselves. And then 
Also looking at some of the other research, it's again, these same antioxidants, the proanthocyanidins that may also support oral health because it's the same bacterial thing. They can actually protect the teeth from bacteria that can lead to decay. And it's also this antibacterial property that may support gum health as well. And then the proanthocyanidins in the cranberries can also support bacterial gut issues. So walk with me on this one for a second. So H. pylori or H. pylori is bacterium. It's considered a major cause of stomach cancer, stomach inflammation, and even ulcers. Similar to the way we talked about the powerful antioxidant preventing E. coli from attaching to the urinary tract, the same antioxidant may prevent H. pylori from attaching to the lining of the stomach. So it's interesting to me that there are studies here again on both adults and kids. So take with that what you will. And then pairing the antioxidants with the other nutrients, you may hear about cranberries for heart health. So there's certainly a mix of research from the studies, again, quite a bit on humans using cranberry juice or cranberry extracts. And they basically showed that the cranberry juice or extract may increase HDL cholesterol, which is your good cholesterol, may lower LDL cholesterol in people with diabetes, could potentially protect the LDL cholesterol from oxidizing, decrease blood vessel stiffness in those with heart disease, and may lower blood pressure and homocysteine levels. So interesting. You know, again, I just want to point out that like the uses for cranberries are not necessarily the way that we're going to get the fiber from any of them, right? So again, these benefits are coming from the micronutrients, which we can get from some of these other forms, but we just want to put it all in perspective, I think. And again, like mostly because people aren't eating them whole, right? Because of that flavor. So, okay, a couple of points of caution. One, if you are predisposed to kidney stones, be careful with cranberries. So, most kidney stones are made of calcium oxalate. Cranberries contain high levels of oxalates. I also want to mention here oxalates in general are one of these sort of anti nutrients that people talk about. I think we certainly want more research to better understand the calcium oxalates in cranberries and its connection to kidney stones. But I think just to have this on your radar if you are predisposed to kidney stones. And then if you are taking blood thinning medications, be careful. Talk to your healthcare providers across the board with any of these kinds of things, but especially because, as we said, the cranberries have K1. And so K1 can sometimes interfere with those medications. And then remember, not all cranberry products are going to offer the health benefits because essentially we need to make sure that the product is retaining the vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And depending how it's processed or depending on what's added to it, you know, you may not get that. So let's talk about buying them whole and how we might want to use them. All right. So first of all, they're typically harvested in September, October. So eat them in the fall (laughs) or get them fresh in the fall and then freeze them. Although you can also buy them dried, frozen, or canned. And again, we're looking for the whole cranberry. And then because they're sour and sharp in flavor, you'll probably want to do something to them. So a couple of ideas. Well, before I get to that, so just I'm going to say it again. We're talking about buying them fresh, frozen, whole. Beware of your cranberry juices, your cranberry juice cocktails. Read the ingredients. Know what you're getting when you're buying those kinds of products. And then. If you want to use the whole ones, here's what we can do beyond cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving. <laughs> right? So you could certainly use unsweetened dried cranberries on top of salads or veggies. You could use them in a homemade trail mix on top of desserts or even you know, with chia pudding would be delicious. You could even add a little bit of 100% pure cranberry juice to your nut milk as the base for a chia pudding. Like that actually sounds delicious. I sort of want to make some. (laughs) You could add fresh or frozen cranberries to a smoothie and your other smoothie ingredients will certainly balance that out. And if you want to cook them yourself, you could do it really easily. Just throw them in a small pot. You're going to warm them up over low heat and then you can add like a splash of 
100% orange juice. You could add a little bit of maple syrup, ginger, cinnamon, cloves, like spice them up however you want. And then that little sauce that you create could be a topping for chicken or pork or turkey or something you're eating. You could also put it on top of like spaghetti squash or sweet potatoes or any of your winter squashes like butternut squash. You could even adjust that recipe a little and put it on top of any sort of cooked greens or veggie sides. So, I mean, I'm now I'm thinking it's like pair them with some nuts or some nut butter and balance the flavor. Use them in like your own little energy ball. Go crazy, but just, you know, read those ingredients, make sure you know what you're getting. And that's kind of the scoop on cranberries, right? Despite having quite a bit of fiber, most of the health benefits that we're getting are because of those antioxidants. So Karen, any thoughts, anything to add? No, that's really good information. I I honestly didn't know that much about cranberries. That's really helpful. Yeah, no, but I, I loved your ideas. You just, I don't know if you just pulled those out of what you could do with them, but I mean, so many, there's a lot of good ideas that you could do with them. Yeah. Avoiding the juices. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Avoiding the juices. Well, as always, everybody, I'm your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I'm at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Website is a salad with a side of fries dot com. Whether it's the website or social media, send a message. I want to hear your takeaways and ideas or your questions. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach or checking out our merch. So merch is also available at asaladwithasideofrise.com. Karen Dodeja Smith, thank you again for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy talking with you. So I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Likewise. And friend, if you are not already a member, join our membership by going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. This shows your support for this podcast and this community, but most importantly, it supports your health. You'll get this week's recipes for the cranberry vinaigrette and the paleo crockpot chicken with butternut squash, pears, and cranberries. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. Share us with a friend and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.